Good morning. I'm Paul Fopiano, fifth generation wine grower here in Russian River Valley on our Hillsburg estate. And I'm with our winemaker, Nova Perel. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Petite Syrah and the heritage of Petite Syrah. And um, we've had Petite Syrah here on the ranch for numerous decades, dating back long before my time. Um, my grandfather was always a big fan of Petite Syrah, and it does very well on the terroir of our estate. We have a special estate here that can grow other varieties such as Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, um, got some Barbera, Kerrigan, but today we're going to focus on Petite Syrah mainly because that's our that's always been Fopiano's flagship and always will be. And we have a little over 50 acres planted to that varietal to this at this point. Um, we're going to be planting some more um, coming up here in the next two years. And uh, the, the great part about Petite Syrah is it's I'm going to let Nova get into the winemaking and that end of it, but it's such a fun grape to grow because it's so challenging and it's either one thing or another it's too wet and it's and it's going to get rot in the fall if you get a summer rain or it's too hot and dry and everything on the afternoon side outside the trellis system gets fried and burnt so it is a balancing act and it's a challenge but the rewards are so good for us in the end looking at that final product and, and having that hearty wine with those lush vibrant flavors is just amazing for us yeah, I mean, growing Petite Syrah, making wine out of it is uh, it's definitely a, a long tradition of Northern California uh, viticulture and enology. It really doesn't get as much credit as it deserves probably as being kind of a, a backbone of uh, not only wines being produced for, you know, 100 years plus, more than 100 years. It's, you know, it's structurally it is a backbone for the wine and it's a backbone of grape growing and winemaking. So again, it probably doesn't get as much credit as it deserves, um, but making Petite Syrah is a, a game in which you are, are taming flavors and structural characteristics that are very unique to the grape. So again, treating the wine like, like for example, Pinot Noir is, is a great start because what do people always say when they're talking about Pinot? It's gentle, gentle, gentle. Everything, gentle. Everything's hand punched down and, you know, light crushing. What we do here is we apply those same concepts to Petite Syrah. So you're getting, you're getting your structure, your fantastic color, and you're getting your characteristics that are true to the varietal without over extracting that harsh tannin that I think plays a role in some of its, uh, you know, the characteristics of the wine that people tend to not like are that, is that really harsh finish and... Well, that's it, the hardest thing with Petite Syrah. I mean, let's be honest, is getting those tannins to be round and soft on, on your mid palate, you mm -hmm. know, because they can just be so rough, especially when they're young. And that's, you know, like you said, those are some of the steps you need to take to get that yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. So gentle treatment. And, 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 and again, too, it's a funny concept when people feel like, oh, it's a big, hearty wine. We need to, we need to beat it up. We need to, you know, crush it and knock it down, knock it down. And no, but it's the exact opposite. And even, even with your barrel program, but it's the exact opposite as far as um, treating it gently, keep that extraction under control because you're going to get your color and you're going to get your flavor, but you don't need that extra heavy tannin that is in there. So again, we treat it very gently. We do as much um, hand punch down as possible. We do small bat from batch fermentation, very gentle pressing when the wine is, is completed its primary fermentation. And we put it right into barrels. I mean, it's, it would really be identical to a, a high-end Pinot Noir production plan. And uh, the end product of that is a lot, is much more a fruit characteristic in Petit Syrah, which can be very rare. A lot of times there's nothing but coffee and cocoa and and those are all fantastic flavors, but having a little bit of blueberry in there doesn't hurt, you know? So, yeah, a little bit of black cherry. Yeah, some of those characteristics that often get lost when you're a little over aggressive with the fruit. And then um, I mentioned the barrel program. You'd think that a really heavy toast, uh, brand new oak, American oak, those kind of like heavy hitting, you know, cooperage concepts. Uh, would benefit, but really it's the opposite. And as far as my experience anyways, is that if you can do a, a very elegant French oak, uh, something you'd pick for Pinot Noir, for example, um, lighter toast, medium, medium or even lighter, 
I find that those actually enhance a lot of characteristics, whereas the heavier toast just bury. It's just layer upon layer of, of heavy duty structure from the barrel and the grapes. It, it's just not harmonious. There's no balance there. And I think barrel aging too is, um, is critical. You know, a, a brand new barrel is probably not your best option for Petit Syrah, or, or you need to go with a lower percentage of those. Mm -hmm. Exactly, low, <laughs> low percentage of new oak is one of our strategies. We use a lot of once filled barrels. There's a, a decent market out there, big high-end Napa Valley producers, God bless them, will use a barrel one year and and then sell it for about one quarter of the price. And that's just perfect for what we need it for. Uh, most of the heavier characteristics, again, from that barrel have been leached out into the wine, their wine, and they give it to us. And it's a much more mellow version and, and it works better for our style. It gives character, it gives oak character without structure again. And it allows us to age the wine over 18 months, 18, 20 months, whatever it's gonna take, again, as a strategy to round that wine out, round the finish, mellow the tannin, and uh, it's quite a commitment to have wine in the cell, you know, real realistically, we can have three vintages of Petit Syrah in the cellar at any one time, which is, you know, mind-boggling in a way, because it seems like there's not enough room for it all, but um, that's what it takes to do it right, to do it right. And if you're gonna be- It needs its time. It needs its time. And if you're gonna, you know, be a long-term producer of Petit Syrah like Fopiano Vineyards is, then you're gonna stick with the techniques that you know work.